Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. They had a special this morning on um, BBC about uh, financial fraud. It made me think of the industry I'm part of. And how some lady about 60 years old got clipped for 62,000 pounds by um, uh, Romance Online. That's not the name of it, but it was a Romance Online. And uh, the, uh, hey, get in here. Um, and uh, I don't see why. Let me back up a second. I get emails weekly that they got scammed by some personal development or financial guru. Weekly. Unfortunately, about 10% of the time, they're mini-me's <laughs> that I trained. <sighs> There's nothing I can do about that, although we're just filing another big lawsuit against a guy which should hit the papers big time because I'm going to take his fucking teeth out. But 90%, um, this is one man's opinion, 90% of the people that you have, not just you, when I say you, I mean everybody, that you have looked to for guidance, either personal guidance, financial guidance, business guidance, are frauds. Not frauds in the sense that they're uh, uh, bunco artists or con men, but frauds because the shit doesn't work. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, would you? But then why don't you go after him? There should be a clash action lawsuit against almost every single person that's selling shit online. But there aren't any. Oh, well, that's an exact, that's a Trump exaggeration. There are some, but it's few and far between. Oops. And part of the reason is it costs money to sue. And although everybody in this room, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, have convictions, right? There's things that you believe in. Maybe not. How about getting ripped off? Do you like being getting ripped off? Probably not. But some of you are so used to being engaged in self-sabotaging activities. I could give the whole seminar just on self-sabotaging activities. Does everybody, for those that English isn't your primary language, you understand self-sabotaging activities. Well, on a subconscious level, you go out and fuck it up on purpose. 75% of the people that come to this seminar have engaged in self-sabotaging activities on a subconscious level. Occasionally, when you're really a fuck up, you do it on a conscious level. I'm going to fuck this up. And I was listening to this woman who got clipped for 60 grand plus pounds. And she was embarrassed to tell her, uh, her, uh, her, her children and her uh, parents that she got clipped. But she did this interview on BBC, so now everybody knows, so she was forced to tell them. She says, I'm so embarrassed. She's going through tears and crying. and I'm so embarrassed. I'm so humiliated that I could get taken like that. Her, her, her 16 year old son said, Mom, don't, don't do it. It took her, her 16 year old son about three microseconds to look at this is a scam. Now, presumably, Reddit and, and platforms like that were developed, supposedly, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, to you know, warn people about scamsters. But then somebody else told me recently, no, Dan, that's not why Reddit got, Reddit uh, uh, was formed uh, as a platform for whiners. And then I, I mean, and I, I'm not easily shocked, believe me. Um, and I thought about it. And then I went and I read some of the Reddits. Uh, now, you guys, I, you don't have to send me my uh, new uh, posting from Reddit, guys. You know, I, it's all bullshit about me. Uh, and then I went and read a, a few posts about some of the other guys I know. And, uh, and I connected some of the dots that I had previously not connected. And it is. And, but Reddit's not the only platform for whiners. I don't know the others, but I'm told that that's just one. There's a lot of platforms where you can go and bitch 
And uh, for example, when um, they say I've got 500 uh, five-star ratings, you know, uh, uh, on Amazon or whatever, um, most of those are paid. Somebody wrote them. But in this particular, with the way this, um, this little 10-minute special on BBC ended, if romance turns to finance, it's a scam. And I thought that was kind of cute, when romance turns to finance. And 99% of the financial scams are originated where there's no rule of law. Not in the UK, not in the US, not in Canada, but in Ethiopia, Belarus, Nigeria, Bolivia, where there's no rule of law. But even the ones that are, that are um, initiated in, where there's a rule of law, unless somebody goes after them, they just continue. And as you well know, they just uh, change their address, their email address, and their IP address, etc., and, and they start all over again. But then, the reason I bring it up is that not all of you are going to do this. I said it yesterday. Subconsciously, you know, uh, as I said, the leading Mercedes salesman that came through here a few years ago said, I never heard so many whiners bitching about, is it, going to, is it really take 2,000 cold calls? In this room, a couple of you mentioned the 2,000 cold calls. Well, does that count these calls or that? Remember? How fucking hard is it to pick up the phone? Apparently very hard. Because some of you that went to school didn't go to school to be a fucking shitbag salesman. When your father sold whatever he did, it was just, you didn't call him just a shitbag traveling salesman, did you? He's an industrial engineer. You made up a title, or he made up a title, to make his job seem more important, right? So now you're going to be just a shitbag piece of garbage salesman. I'm a salesman, and I'm proud of it. I'm a salesman that's taken his sales skills to the top, to governments. But you didn't go to school, become a whatever, you know, and I love when in this country they put a Bachelor of Science in parentheses honors. Who gives a fuck you got an honors degree? That's a joke. But if that's all you've got in life, you put it. For those of you that didn't do shit, didn't go to school, you obviously, well, so, some of you guys con. And by the way, I'm going to say this. On your LinkedIn profiles, tell the truth, not the bullshit that you've been telling people for years on your resume or CV. Because people that are going to be, you try to recruit for the board are going to do background checks. And all it takes is one red flag and you're never going to get them. You're lucky they don't go to Reddit and then say so-and-so and so-and-so are putting bullshit down on their uh, resume and their CV. 5% of the CV's resumes that I see are 100% accurate. 5%. Only 5%. Because you add some bullshit in there hoping that nobody checks. And for those of you that decide not to follow through, and follow through to me is following the seven steps uh, in the uh, order that they are presented to you, uh, that's fine. Some of the kids that have attended the seminar in the 27 years have finally said, I don't have to kick myself in the ass anymore. This isn't for me. High performance life isn't for me. See, you don't equate money. You, you equate making a lot of money with being high performance. That's not true. I was talking to the tall guy back there in the corner, uh, the, uh, and uh, I, I was surprised that the industry that he's in gets paid that high. Remember, I commented, fuck, you know, that's a lot of shekels. Uh, but high performance is a way of life. It's not just making a million dollars a year or $10 million a year. Because you, so, you know so little about high performance, almost everybody that comes here equates, you know, uh, the guys that I use as examples that are making uh, a lot of money. A lot, not, I haven't, we haven't talked to anybody yet that makes a lot of money vis-a-vis -vis my standards. <laughs> but 
But we have talked about with people so far, or we've listened to people, that make a lot of money in the general sense of the world. You know? and, but that's not what high performance is. High, high performance is how you treat your family, how you treat your kids, how you treat yourself, who you make accountable, how you keep yourself accountable. One of the things I start saying today is default's a bitch. The reason why all these big time high performers come back to the seminar again and again is because default's a motherfucker. It's very lonely out there when you're the only one on the motherfucking battlefield. The movie 300, when those guys got get chewed up by the Persians, I think it's the Persians, whoever they are, uh, and then they kill the king uh, Leonidas, but you're Leonidas, you don't have those 300 guys behind you. It's just you. Nobody's going to be there to help you. And the people that perform now that we don't have a mentor program were the guys that would perform even without the program. Being a high performance play is a way of life in everything you do, not just because you're going to make a few million dollars right away. And it's, well, a year to me to make a few million dollars is right away. Some of you kids have done it almost overnight in a few weeks. You make $70 million in, in, ten, in seven months, excuse me. That's not right away, but it kind of sounds like right away, doesn't it? It's better than a poke in the eye with a fucking sharp stick, as my old uh, line thieving Tennessean lawyer, sales manager used to say. I just don't understand why you're so complacent about the people that have taken your money and for the systems that don't work. Now, they would argue if you took them to court, it's you that didn't make it work. And they would pull out some little skinny, black, yellow, purple guy or gal and say, well, this guy made $82 trillion. I love the guys when every once in a while somebody sends me a, a link. Uh, uh, I made uh, uh, six figures in four minutes. Or I made uh, seven figures in eight months. Or I made eight figures in... Has anybody ever checked? No. You're taking the word of the lying, cheating guru. It astonishes me. But then again, as I said earlier yesterday, when I used to tell my mother, why can't everybody be like me? And my mother would tell me, son, thank God they're not. And when I used to ask my first wife and, Ke and, Ke and Sally, uh, why they, can't they all be like me? And both my first wife um, and Sally said, thank God they're not like me. They'd be all Hitlers running around. And the reason why you allow yourself to be taken advantage of because you've led a self-sabotaging lifestyle all, forever. Now, some of you have made a few, a few bucks. I, um, the operative word is a few, or the operative words are a few. But almost everybody equates high performance. Like Albert Einstein was high performance. He, he died poor. I don't think he had, well, this is exaggerated, I don't think he had 25 grand. Well, you're not Einstein. Unless you've been hiding something here. You're not Einstein. But you have to, you have to take responsibility. QLA is a system that puts the responsibility and the onus on you. Nobody else. You have the dream team to back you up because you don't know shit. But unless you take responsibility, the motherfucker doesn't work. I told you yesterday, some of the questions you guys asked, I have never heard of, thought of, dreamt of in 50 fucking years. And if my wife was standing here, she'd say, Dan, those, all the questions asked are based on insecurity, lack of self-esteem, and lack of self-confidence. I had a dream last night about one of my first mentees, a quintessential Englishman. Uh, and somehow we were involved in a, a James Bond situation, and he was in with MI5, or, and he asked me for help, and, and then I woke up. Uh, the, uh, why I would think about him after all these years, he's dead, uh, I don't know. I, I have no idea. 
Uh, and uh, I'm not going to go and Google the uh, Freudian dreams and shit like that because I, I don't give a shit why. And the biggest difference between me and everybody that's ever come through the seminar is I only want to know how and I don't give a fuck about why. Do you know how much time you spend on the whys in your life? Well, when you start keeping track of it, when you get the weekly report schedule and you can see how much time you fucking waste, you will throw up. You will throw up. Guys like Steve Jobs and um, Elon Musk, uh, excuse me, Bill Gates and Elon Musk share a habit. They keep their diaries, their schedules in five minute increments. Some people say six minute increments, some people say five. Well, five or six is about the same. But in other words, you've got less, you've got about 10 seconds to introduce the idea and you've got four minutes and 50 seconds to convince them on your idea and then it's the next meeting. Even myself, I can't say hello in five minutes. And I'm articulate enough for sure but when you're accountable for every minute of your day, from the time you get up to the time you, you go to bed, and you gotta write it down. For those of you who were here in March, nobody ever asked me about the weekly reporting, the guys that came through for March, because you didn't do it, or you didn't do it properly. You should be sick when you start keeping track. We have kids make, that make two, three hundred cold calls a day. A motherfucking day. And guess what? You heard some of them. Thomas, you want to know why he's a superstar? It's no magic. He's just a little fucking shit Canadian, Chinese Canadian, who's two feet tall and looks eight years old. He made 82 zillion calls, that's why. This is a numbers game. You're nothing but a shitbag salesman if you make the system work. And your parents didn't raise you to be a shitbag salesman, did they? Anybody in the room, their parents, when, when my son goes up, he's going to be a shitbag salesman. When I came back from the military, I used to play golf uh, a couple times a month with a group of guys uh, that I uh, became not friendly with but acquainted with. And one of them was the leading salesman, cemetery plot salesman in the country. The leading cemetery plot salesman in the country. His nickname was Digger. I mean, truth is stranger than Fishkin. And we'd be out there playing golf, and I was a good golfer. And the, uh, I mean, he, he'd, get, he'd get me laughing. I couldn't hit them. From the time I left the tee laughing, and by the time I got out to my drive, I, I was still laughing. I mean, I couldn't stand up over the ball. Um, and all the, all the stories you hear about cemetery plots and then burying three and four people in one plot, etc., are all true. When we went to uh, my cousin, uh, the guy that stabbed the guy 17 times, we went to move my uh, aunt's um, body to be closer to uh, uh, her mother's body. And... Uh, and he wasn't in the fucking grave. But two other people were. All those stories are true. Now, they're cleaning it up, they are. Pun intended. They're cleaning it. It's just like uh, when you get grandma or you get uh, uh, Fido back from the crematorium, right? If you think that that's Fido's ashes, you're fucking brain dead. You are fucking brain dead. If you think that's your grandma's ashes, you are stupid. Do you think they clean the motherfucking crematorium out every time? At like a Corona Rona? What, what, what are you smoking? If it's not addictive, give me some of that shit. Let me get high too. But there's certain things in life you just accept. That's not Fido. I wanted to bear a Fido with my grandmother. So at least I know there's a higher probability that the ashes are going to be something I cared about. How many have had a loved one cremated in, the la in their life? Did anybody ever tell you that that's not who? No, right? Did you even ask the fucking question? No, you're too fucking stupid. Or you don't want to know the answer. 
They have first class billionaire kind of crematoriums, but they, you can't do it for three grand or six grand like they do where you went. Hundred grand. You didn't care enough to, uh, about your grandma or Fido, did you? Well, now, the next person you cremate, just think about that. What are you going to do? Nothing. Just like the rest of your, your entire life, you've done nothing. This is not the end-all, be-all, being here. Unless you pull the fucking trigger. As Einstein says, any man who reads too much and uses his own brain too little falls into the lazy habits of thinking. And that's what you all have suffered from all your fucking life. And somebody has told you, read two books a day. Think of... What have you learned about those two books a day? From those two books a day? Nothing. And now you're, you're sitting before a guy who reads no books. You can, this is a slight Trump exaggeration. You can count the books on this many fingers without my thumbs that I've read in my whole life. What does Albert say? And what do you do? Or what have you done heretofore? Within the gigs you're going to get, there's seven or eight books that, if you have to, if you can't stand it and you're going crazy, you got to read something, there's seven or eight books I list. Seven or eight books I list. I get emails from some of you that are going to, came to this seminar. How can I best prepare? How am I going to get, take a maximum advantage of the week? Is it, you know, those kind of questions? I sent you a fucking list of things to read and review, and you didn't do that. So, but now you want to read something. It's you that is the problem. You know that. And then when you, when you realize finally it's you, then it's be what's between your ears. This is not the end all, kids. It isn't. Unless you pull the fucking trigger. Remember yesterday I talked about expectations? It's all about setting expectations. So far, for the most of you in this room, the expectations for you have been low. Perhaps they were associated with education because almost all people associate progress with education, meaning uh, formal education. Uh, I don't. Um, if you could have been mentored like I was by Konstantin Gratzos, the CEO of NASA Shipping Lines, that's better than any fucking graduate degree that I ever thought about getting. When you could have been mentored by um, Governor Hugh Carey, the former governor of New York, who saved New York State from bankruptcy and saved uh, New York City from bankruptcy in the 70s, you, you can't buy that in a degree. And I can name a whole bunch of other guys that I was privileged to be under their wing, so to speak. But it's up to you to make the system work. It's up to you. Do we see, do we hear Andreas today? Do we see Andre? Do we hear Andreas today? Yeah. You're only uh, you're only two thousand cold calls, and he's going to say, "And I, uh, my I I made one thousand six hundred and thirteen cold calls. One thousand six hundred and thirteen. How Hitler? Steve." Change the world. I got most of you to admit or agree yesterday before we broke up, has Steve Jobs changed the world? And almost kind of nodded like this. <laughs> and having met Steve, the last time I saw Steve was in Bangalore, India, at a disco. Um, he was dancing, he was wearing his black shit, you know, and he was in the middle of the dance floor just like this, dancing with himself. Like and he's in a trance. That's the last time I saw him. He lived his life in a trance. And I'm not saying it was because of drugs. I don't know anything about that. What about Steve? Comments about Steve. Other than he's not like you. But that's a given. 
Yes, sir, in the back. Ruthless, vicious. Really, gee, duh, fucking morons. He personified ugly actions towards others. Yet he's an icon, is he not? Anybody in this room think he is not an icon? What else about Steve? Yes, sir. He said he, he changes fact patterns, or his fact patterns move differently than everyone else. He said God sent his son on a suicide mission, but everybody likes him because he made trees. So his fact patterns made him think like, look, bitch, you know, fuck your child support. Like, I'm not going to pay you. I got all this money. It wasn't, he wasn't being mean. He was just actually, that was the way he actually thought because he had changed his fact patterns. And he literally said, look, everybody likes God because he, he killed his son because he made trees. So he didn't really care about his daughter and, and his, his... He didn't care about anybody. Does that sound like somebody you know? See, you've never met these guys. That's the problem. Watching all these videos about these icons is not like knowing them in person. It's not even a, a reasonable facsimile. It's not even close. People say, uh, you, uh, all you guys have seen me on YouTube. Is it the same as being here in person? You fucking ain't right, it isn't. Well, just multiply that times a hundred or a thousand or a million. And I've met these guys. I've sat and laughed at them in the stupidity of you guys. They don't understand why you pay money to learn how to get money, uh, be, make money. They don't understand it. And when we're off camera, I'll tell you some personal uh, stories and anecdotes from some of the big guys. They do not understand why this little skinny shit is sitting in that chair. What the fuck? They think I'm stealing from you. Legally. You're just telling them, Dan, what everybody knows. Well, apparently everybody doesn't know it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be backed up for a year. They do not understand. Just like some of the things I say, I can't comprehend that. Well, they can't comprehend. They don't comprehend personal development, which is a scam for the most part. They don't understand financial coaching. They don't understand any of that. Why do you got to go pay somebody fucking money? What else about Steve? Yes, sir. He didn't want to know why it's not working. He put them on the Russian roulette like a... Uh, Correct. Correct. You didn't tell Steve or me back in my prime, which I don't think I'm much past my prime now, but people say just by my age I am. I'm not interested in why the fuck the thing doesn't work. All I want to know is how are you going to make it work? Remember the how, not the why, and how I can depend on it and what time frame. When I used to have the weekly reports that I read, and I read it myself, one of the comments I used to make, if we were at war, we'd all be fucking dead, you piece of shit, in big red font. If we were at war, we'd all be dead. In wartime, Mistakes cause deaths. Um, the founder of um, Federal Express, Smith, um, didn't tell me personally, although we're contemporaries, a year older than I am, he was a, uh, a Marine officer, I was a young Army officer. When he came back, um, he said, as soon as I found out my mistakes were not body bags coming back from Vietnam. In other words, I made a mistake so men, men that I served under me died. I mean, the rest was easy. Building Federal Express was easy. None of your decisions, uh, there's a doctor or two in the audience, but uh, uh, and, and unless you're a specialist doctor operating on hearts, you're not going to cause anybody's life unless you give them the wrong medicines and some shit. These are not life-death decisions. These are not life-death decisions. What else about Steve? Yes, sir. He saw opportunity to simplify anything and to monetize it where others saw potential challenges and obstacles, the why and the how that we just spoke about. 
Steve only wanted to know the how. Every single person, not every, almost every single person we're going to talk about only wants to know the how. They're not, they don't give a fuck about the why. And nearly 100% of the people that come to the seminar want to know why. Is a, there's an absolute dichotomy between how you think, and when I say you, I mean the kids that come to the seminar, and the YouTube morons, and the icons think. One of my mentees is the mentor to Wozniak now. The Woz. How is that possible? And the mentee is about half the age of the was. And I've never met the was. I know what he looks like. Short, pudgy little guy. But what else about Steve? Yes, sir. He didn't have the product, but it, uh, he made a big show so that he can sell to Apple. And the product didn't work. The product you buy, I bought, don't work. Haven't you figured that out yet? Or if the product did work, then that even makes you more stupid than I'm alluding to. If the products and the other stuff that you've tried really does work, and you're the anomaly that it didn't work for, how fucking stupid are you? But see, nobody ever poses this, these facts to you this way, do they? Because they got some other shit to sell you. I hope you all leave today. I can sleep in tomorrow. I'm not, that's, that's not a bullshit. It's for real. During the uh, hardcore this year, January, we had a guy collapse. We haven't had a guy collapse in a while. And he collapsed and he fell on Brian Culey Rose, who was at the, at the hardcore. He just went on, bam! And they went tumbling down on, on Brian Culey Rose's new suits that he gets at my tailors now, which is tailored to the royal family. The same, we had two doctors in the audience. Neither one got out of their chair to go check the guy. Neither one! We had uh, two nurse practitioners, which is kind of like a senior nurse, kind of. I don't know exactly what a fucking nurse practitioner does. They went over there and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, one of them pulled his tongue out of his mouth so he didn't choke. And I just kept rolling. I didn't stop the fucking seminar. But Brian believes now. And does, we didn't, the only thing we didn't, we, we didn't film it. We should have filmed it. But I do have an ounce of humanity in me. Not much more than a fucking ounce, though. We didn't film it. We should have put it on fucking YouTube. And how the doctors didn't come to help him. Well, if the doctors help him and the guy dies, they can sue the doctor. We had a doctor here, a lady doctor, uh, last seminar, and she said, uh, when something happens like that, and then and my husband always, I, I get ready to stand up, and my, my husband yanks me by the forearm, stay seated. If there's other doctors, let them do it. It's a different world. When I was a kid, I mean, all the doctors would have stood up, and, but now, no good deed goes unpunished. But Brian Culey Rose is a believer. I would have liked, because he was, eh, eh, and spit up on his new suit, but he didn't. He, he missed him with a fucking thing that came out of his mouth. This, you know, we haven't anybody, had anybody shit their pants in a while, though. We've had a few people pee their pants. And the real reason you get up and pee is so you don't pee your pants. Before, we didn't let you get up to pee until the breaks. Now, just think about, think about that and your weak little bladders. We'd have a lot more pee in their pants, wouldn't we? Almost, okay. 
I got plenty of time to get on that bandwagon. Okay. Uh, anything else about Steve? Yes, sir. Confrontation. He wasn't scared of it, and he imposed his will at any cost. He didn't care who it was. He looked for confrontation, just like I do. When I was a kid, I, and I was pretty big and pretty tough, but I was the weakest link in our chain of five guys. I was the weakest. I was the le least tough. Is that right? Good English. I was the least tough of the five guys. The toughest guy in our group is serving life for murder in Florida. And uh, I used to run into biker bars and um, do whatever I could to disrupt things, and I'd run out in the parking lot. And I'd stand behind the four. And uh, they used to send me, Pena likes comfort, he likes to sh stir the shit. And I did, and I still do. Whereas, what have you been taught? Now, I'm not telling you, I'm not suggesting they're running in and start fights with bikers and bikers. Um, that's not the point. The point was that the way I was raised, you didn't walk away from confrontation. And that's why I say, run towards the fucking gunfire and kill everybody, metaphorically speaking. That's why I say that. Not many of the kids can do that. They don't, you know. We had a kid uh, a few months ago uh, that uh, um, the guy cut in, line, in front of the line, this is uh, pre-corona, he, uh, he jumped to the front of the queue, jumped to the front of the line. Everybody in the line, 15, 20 people, nobody said anything. The kid, feeling, I guess, QLA macho, went up and uh, told the guy to get to the back of the fucking line. Uh, and, um, and then two or three of the, the weenies, the whiners, saw him do it, so then they stood behind him because the guy apparently was a big guy, and uh, then the guy went back to the back of the line. What else about Steve? Yes, sir. Uh, the first computer didn't sell very well, and he failed his uh, uh, per limit, but the people still loved him. And then finally, he sold very much, and uh, he was right with his sentence, people don't know what they want. Well, he's right about that. People don't know. I think choice is bad. I'm sure Trump thinks choice is bad. He, not that I know anything about the president. But, I, you know, I, I believe Trump thinks choice is bad right now. It's like Jack Nichols said, you can't stand the truth! You don't want to know the truth. You've led sheltered, bubble-wrapped lives for the most part. And the world is getting more sheltered, more bubble-wrapped, and more politically correct. Anything else about Mr. Uh, Jobs? Yes, sir. The musician plays the instrument I am playing the orchestra. Correct. And what I said at the, uh, I think, opening uh, remarks here a couple nights ago is that for the first time you are going to have all the instruments, all the arrows in your quiver, and you're going to be the uh, conductor. And you're going to see that of the 20 or 25 financial instruments that are available in the world, and there's more than that, but I say 20 or 25, you only need one. Some of you, we had an oboe, a world-class oboe player uh, here uh, two seminars ago. And, um, the, uh, and he, could, he could play two or three other instruments. Uh, and, but you don't need to be able to play two or three instruments. All you need to be able to do is control, either directly or indirectly, the motivated seller. And the key, and we spent a lot of time on, on, on the dialogue, is how do you ascertain the difference between a suspect and a prospect? For those in the audience, not just this audience, any audience, they can figure out that the first, you won't waste time. Or you won't waste as much time. Anything else about Mr. Jobs? Yes, sir, in the back. He wasn't concerned about input or product input from colleagues or consumers. He told them what they wanted. Correct. 
I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. Where have you heard that? Don't confuse me with the facts. Where have you heard that? And you want to know the why. By the look on your face, I can tell I'm the only one in the room that understands the absurdity of wanting to know why. I'm the only one in here. I can just look at you. How can the old man say that? All my life has been in pursuit of the why. Well, all my life is in pursuit of the how. And look at the difference. You're going to know the how definitively. Whether you pull the trigger or not is up to you. But you're going to know the how definitively. Again, once you pull the trigger. Okay, YouTube.